everyone and welcome back. Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing very well, okay? I trust that you're taking very good care of yourself. So, today I am going to tell you about a vlog I did. And in this vlog, I read quite the array of diverse extreme horror books. I read two extreme horror books, one which was completely on a whim and recommended by somebody who had apparently been following my reviews diligently on Goodreads, following them diligently enough that they were like, hey, I think you're gonna like this. I did not know what this vlog was gonna be upon starting making it. You will see how it evolves should you choose to continue watching, which I sincerely hope you do. Also, in case anyone's wondering, I might have given maybe a couple of five-star reviews, okay? And yeah, a couple of these books are some of the best books I have read all year. So to find out why I love these books so much, I sincerely hope you continue watching, okay? Okay. Oh my gosh, hey everyone. So I, my hair is a fucking mess. Um, but I just gotta tell you that this is not a filter. This is what the actual outside looks like. I'm gonna get some, so much footage for you. Gonna play some music. Get a load of this. I cannot believe my eyes. Check this out. Yeah, I hope I get some good finds and we shall see what I purchase. Okay, check in soon. Look at all these innocent books, everyone. I'm just gonna add something to this 
pile. Yeah, that looks really good there. All right, hey everyone and welcome. Welcome to what I honestly couldn't tell you at this point. Um, but welcome to something. I am over here about to start a vlog, which I don't know is gonna actually turn into a vlog because I am starting this vlog with literally no plan, literally no theme, literally no rhyme or reason. But I'm doing so because I started this book. <laughs> I started I started this book that I was recommended on on Goodreads, and it's called The Devil. The, what's this book called? Hold on, give me a second. What is this book called? You might ask. Interesting question. Better the Devil You Know by. Bay Deckard. Okay, so I actually looked the author up. He has this like website where he draws porn, which is awesome. And <laughs> here's an example. Just kidding. I don't want to get more banned and fucked by the algorithm than I am. <laughs> also, it's like it's gay porn. So <laughs> anyway, so so I was recommended this book by somebody on Goodreads. So thank you to the person who recommended this to me. If you watch my channel, hi. How are you? Um, if you don't, subscribe. Basically, I think this person saw that I read The Sluts by Dennis Cooper and Exquisite Corpse, and they were like, you want to read some sexual stuff that's super fucked up and depraved and not smut, but like gore extreme horror shit? Check this out. It is like blood, mutilation, super gay. I was like, okay, okay, all right, I'm interested. I mean, the cover is not that great, which is pretty sad. I used to be the kind of person who is like, if the cover is beautiful, that means the story inside is beautiful because people, you know, a publishing house genuinely saw this thing as good, put some effort into marketing it. My god, I was proven so wrong this year with the Mindfuck series. Probably one of the ugliest covers I've ever fucking seen in my entire life. And now I'm just like, okay, just because it does not have a nice cover doesn't mean it is worthless, okay? So this book has a horrible cover, and now I'm even more curious about it because it's like, this person is describing this book as all these things, the author seems really interesting, I am never judging a book by its cover again, and the content warnings on Goodreads are amazing. So yeah, I am currently in a bout of seasonal depression. I don't know if it's the weather, I don't know if it's my state of mind, I don't know why I'm in such a funk, but how do we cure that shit? Extreme horror, okay? That's how, that's how, I don't know, I'm one of those people that can't unsad myself with happy shit, like I need some fucked up shit to do the job, and this sounds like it's gonna do the job-ish, kind of, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna start reading now, and I will check in soon, okay? All right. A few moments later. Uh, okay. Hello. Oh my gosh. So, I started reading the book, and it is impressing me so much. Like, right off the bat, you know that this person has a way with words. I have never heard of this author before, and I kind of hate myself for that, because, like, this book is doing things very well, very correctly. I am very happy about this. So you know how some horror books just, like, wait before they get to the good stuff? They kind of just, like, you know, fuck around a bit and then get to the good stuff when they get to the good stuff? No. No. That's not the case over here. Um, in this book, we open up with this stuff, okay? Let me just describe the opening scene to you. So we got this guy named Byron Trigger Warning for Violence, which should be something I don't have to give at this channel. Like, this entire channel is a trigger warning, given the books I read. So if you clicked on this, of your, if you clicked on a book that says Extreme Horror Blog, then trigger warnings are given, okay? So I'm gonna fucking talk, and you're gonna either stay or shut the fuck up. Anyway, the book opens up with a guy named Byron. <laughs> He's fucking this guy to death, okay? He's got, like, this guy's hooked up to IVs, his teeth are pulled out, he's got, like, nails, like, jammed into the where the teeth used to be, and he castrated him and used the castrated dick to do something to someone. I'm not gonna get into that, okay? But shit was done. And then he open <laughs> He opens up the guy's chest cavity and fucks him in the chest cavity and is like, I wanna fuck you to death. I wanna feel the life draining out of your body, and he's like fucking him until the heart stops. Good heavens. Bitch. This is probably one of the gnarliest kills I have read in a book, and I excuse the ambient noise of crickets, it's daytime, I live in a jungle. If you're new here, just stick around, I'm gonna end up outside at some point, because girl, the day is beautiful, and I'm definitely gonna wanna be reading outside today. Okay, we just saw a graphic murder scene with a dick 
rubbing up against a human heart. Um, and I cannot wait to see, I'm not, this is not a spoiler vlog, okay? So I'm not gonna be giving all the tea away, but I will be finishing this, like, within the day because girl, 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 girl. This book is short, this book is intense, and I am invested in this, okay? I don't know what the rest of this vlog is gonna be, I don't know what I'm gonna read for this vlog. I might even forget that I filmed this footage, so if you're here, hi, please stick around, um, and yeah, check in soon. Alright, hi, I'm outside now. I told you this is where I was gonna be. This is where I'm gonna end up. Here I am. So I have gotten further into Better the Devil You Know by Bay Deckard, and I am quite impressed. The writing is fantastic. It is phenomenal. It's amazing. It slays. It makes me have hope in the world, have hope in life, but also despair. It's a book that's like that good, and yet it's gotten like no mainstream acclaim which is Le Tragique, okay, which is French for tragic, if y'all weren't keeping score. Um, I do need to issue like a major trigger warning though, because normally it's like, okay, there's gore, there's violence. Over here, there's like a major trigger warning. Um, there is violence against a trans person, and it is a very, very disturbing scene. The person perpetrating the violence is not framed as heroic, and the scene in itself isn't, you know, framed as titillating or interesting. Like, no, it is a through and through disturbing scene depicting a very disturbed and fucked up main character and I think that's the point. Um, this is like a gay, the house that Jack built. I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but Lars von Trier is probably my favorite film director of all time. And his most recent film is a film called The House That Jack Built, which is about this serial killer named Jack, who through a string of events ends up going on this journey where he recalls the murders that he did throughout the years that turned him into the killer he is today. Over here there is an inciting incident that happens rather early into the book that gives us pause and makes us question what kind of genre this story is actually operating in, and I am very surprised, I am very shocked. Normally I don't like when this is done in books of this sort, but for now, and for this story, I think it works. I'm not gonna- ugh, there's so much I want to say, but a lot of things I don't want to say either, because I don't want to give away the surprises. Okay, but basically this book is doing very well. We are certainly um, no longer in the story I thought that this was gonna be and we are recalling certain things in Byron's past that turned him into the killer he is today. And it's gruesome, it's compelling. I am currently unsure what genre this story is operating in beyond extreme horror, definitely a hybrid of extreme horror and something else. So we shall see how this goes. I think I'm gonna do a yoga today. Either that or a jog, I don't know, I'm not too sure. I'm trying to get more fit because I have some more free time on my hands, so we're gonna see how that goes. I've also been trying to lift weights because I want to put on muscle mass. I've been studying fitness more now, taking it more seriously, because I just want to take care of myself and be my best self. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so far this book's pretty interesting. There are trigger warnings for literally everything, so you have what I just described. There's also a scene of, a very, very fucked up scene of incest. Um, I'm not gonna say what happens, but yo, 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 like this book is fucked up. Like this is one of the most messed up extreme horror books I've read, and I'm surprised it isn't as known as other titles like, you know, The Off Seasons, The Summer I Dies, The Survivors, The Cows, you know, books like The Dead Inside. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I did a vlog on Dead Inside, which is one of the most, like, talked about extreme horror books on here. And it's literally that book, compared to a lot of other books I've read for these vlogs, isn't on the same level. Although it does have extreme horror moments that I thought were pretty gnarly, the book is just not as extreme as it has the reputation of being. Yeah, this book is proving to rise to the ranks of other super extreme horror books, and I'm very impressed so far. I can't wait to see where this goes, and I will check in soon. Yeah, I'm either gonna do a yoga now or some lunch. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, check in soon.
All right, hello everyone. Hi, I have finished my first book of this vlog, um, quote unquote vlog, because I don't know what this video is gonna become. So I finished Better the Devil You Know by Kay Deckard. And if you're wondering if I'm only getting ready now that I have turned the camera on and clicked record, the answer is a resounding yes. Honestly, girl, I can do what I want, okay? Yeah, I have an attitude problem, which you want, bitch. All right, so um, I finished the Better, Better the Devil You Know by Kay Deckard, and I loved this book. I have no choice but to give her five stars. That's the truth. That's the facts. Those are the cold, hard facts I'm spitting today. I love this book. I highly recommend this book to fans of Poppy Z. Bright and Dennis Cooper, both um, authors that I have loved in the past. I don't know what to say about it beyond the fact that it came out of nowhere. I didn't even know about this book's existence until I was told about it on Bookstagram. Uh, no, no, no. Goodreads. Yeah, Goodreads. There's sex. There's blood. There's beautiful writing. It is so beautifully written and just so transgressive and so poetic in its perversion. <laughs> Though don't go in expecting to swoon because like this is not a um, book that has any semblance of romance by any means, like this is a straight up extreme horror book. Yeah, let me just put that out there. <laughs> Trigger warnings galore. There are things that I have not seen in other extreme horror books done here that I was very shocked by in a good way, in a very good way. <laughs> if I were you, I would go in knowing as little as humanly possible. Like, I didn't read the plot. I was just told by a kind soul that this book had certain things and I was like, I want that, I want that, I want that, yes and yes and it delivered. Look, sometimes these books don't, but this one certainly did, okay? Excuse the motorcycle, he's a fucking ass. This book is a spectacle. It's blood-soaked, it's traumatizing, it is intense, and this is a very worthwhile, sophisticated slice of serial killer satisfaction that I am very surprised by and will definitely be a book that I will look back on when I think of some of the most disturbing stuff I have ever read that is good that I will be recommending to people far and wide. Straight up, this book is really amazing. <laughs> this book was so good. And in addition to that, it's also really smart. There is a message here and I don't know if I have it completely down. I'm still gonna have to think about it. I do understand it from a plot level and I do understand its treaties on the nature of evil and where it comes from and how it manifests itself in art and the nature of punishment fitting the crime and all those things are things that I enjoyed and that I was able to pick up on as I was reading this. So yeah, if you've read this book, just do let me know what it means to you. Like if your mind twists the same way as mine does. I certainly do think you're gonna enjoy this. Yeah, there are definitely some very thought-provoking arguments in here that I am interested in having conversations about. So no pressure, but if you do read it, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the book is saying in the comments down below. And let me know if you too appreciated the fact that these thought-provoking arguments were wrapped in unabashed indecency and impurity. But in the meantime, later. 2,000 years later. Okay, hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome to a brand new segment to this vlog, which I honestly didn't have any hope for because I was like, what else am I gonna pair with this book? I didn't know what I was gonna do with this vlog initially. However, my friend Judith Sonnet, um, you might have heard of her because she writes faster than I can read at this point, okay? And y'all better check her books out, please. Two seconds later. Okay, sorry. I had to make a TikTok because it was really loud outside and that's what you can do when it's loud. I mean, no wind resistance, you play over somebody's audio, amazing. So, I have been gifted an arc by Judith Sonnet and that is of her new book, For the Sake of Two. If you're wondering, yes, I have read For the Sake of. It was really good, I gave it four stars. She's kind of cursed. <laughs> um, although I love all the books I read from her, I've never given one five stars. I would love to. I would love for this to be the five star book, but although I'm not strict in terms of my standards, I'm fair. If a book doesn't deserve five stars, it doesn't get one. And that's why she values my opinion, I think, I hope. <laughs> Look, honey, you asked for an honest review. Anyway, so we're gonna see how this book goes. I am very skeptical about um, horror sequels, especially extreme horror sequels. Um, if you wanna know why, watch my vlog on The Summer I Died 2, Born to Bleed by Ryan C. Thomas. His solution to 
keeping things fresh was not writing a horror book. So, um, not any shade to him. Um, I, I do appreciate the ambitiousness, but I do also go into horror book sequels expecting to get fucked up. Although I didn't hate the book, um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. So yeah, I'm gonna go into this book and I'm gonna give it a fair shot. I am nervous, I am hesitant, because the this sequel came out very soon, and we shall see what happens. And I'm gonna keep this vlog spoiler free enough so you don't have to click off, read that book, and come back, even though you totally should, because it's really short, she makes her books cheap and affordable, they're worth reading, they're high quality, the gore is amazing. If you like the books I read, you seriously need to go read her books, like, right now. Do it, okay? Do it. And while you do that, I'm gonna go read it for the sake of part dos, part two, trois, the sequel. Check in soon. Alright, hi, I'm here, I'm outside, um, I have no concept, hold on, this is terrible lighting, I need to adjust myself. So I've started Judith's book, and I got it this morning, yes, she sent me the email this morning, she woke me up with a very happy, well, I don't know if she knows that I live in Asia, and she probably thought that I got it at night, um, but no, girl, I got it in the morning, I live in a very different time zone, shout out to you if you're watching. So I actually woke up to her text saying that she sent me an email and that the email was a e-arc of this book. So I am so excited, y'all. The opening kill is gnarly ass book, okay? This book is, you know, coming off as a proper horror sequel. Like, you know how in Friday the 13th, you had one character from the previous book show up to get killed at the beginning, so that's kind of how it is over here. I'm not gonna say who it is, but it is an important-ish character in the first book, and this kill, is gnarly. Sorry, my ISO was so fucked. I am not a professional cinematographer, okay? I don't know how to make these shots look good. I need YouTube tutorials telling me how to run this shit. Okay, so sorry for the bad lighting in the previous one, but hi. An issue I have with certain horror books and certain horror movies is that they are unable to strike this middle ground, the middle ground being character, okay? Because for me, character is everything. If you give me too little of that and rush straight into the action, you get uh, the slight issue I had with The Clown Hunt, even though I love that book a lot. And if you give me too much of that, like, too- wait, giving me too much of the characters, and I start getting bored and wondering why I need to understand Becky's grocery schedule as much as other things in her life that I have to fucking read through with my fucking eyes, you get off-season. I don't know if a single character was named Becky in that book, because I don't remember a single character's name in that book, because I didn't freaking like that book because that book gave me so much info dump about characters I didn't care about, and I was like, okay, I know enough about her. She's a writer. Can we get to the human barbecue, please? Yeah, controversial opinion. We don't stand off-season on this channel. Okay, but over here, this is very different from the first book, but I do sense that it has the same spirit as the first book, okay? To give you a recap, the first book is about this woman named Tabby whose daughter gets kidnapped, and she is tasked to do all these horrible and degrading tasks in order to get her daughter back and the tasks are filmed and uploaded to this snuff film website and the the big bad guy is this guy named Daddy Torturefuck, okay? Over here you have this woman named Sissy Sadism, I believe, and she is trying to up the ante on what Daddy Torturefuck did, so she is the new bad guy and she was very inspired by Daddy Torturefuck. She is a fan. Now that Daddy is no longer in the picture, she is trying to revive his mission and his, um, the games he would play. So this reminds me so much of the villain in The Human Centipede 2, in how that film was also about a guy who was so inspired by the first Human Centipede film that he actually took it upon himself to make a full Human Centipede with full-on medical inaccuracy. And this one over here is like, I mean, nothing they do is medically accurate, so we stand. And, um, yeah, I'm not gonna say what she does, but we do learn about her, and we learn about her posse. She's got two guys working for her. One guy is a guy named Klaus who killed his social studies teacher, which is fun. We stand. I was like, girl, <laughs> I have a vendetta against certain teachers, okay? So I don't exactly hate Klaus that much, given that fact alone. Why he killed the guy, I don't know. So we'll see what happens, okay? Okay, hi, hold on. I'm trying to get a bit more into focus. Okay, hello. We are following this woman named Millie. She is this 20-year-old widow. She had this idea of marrying young, starting a family young, wanting to become a mother, very naive in the world. 
and be sympathized with her because she underestimated just how hard, you know, motherhood and existing in the world where you have to pay for everything um, and jobs are hard to find is. So she's, you know, she's depressed, she has no love life, and we see that she's found this older man on a dating app named Blake. Now, I don't know if he's somebody we can trust. He's far richer than her, he's far older than her, he's giving her large sums of money even before they meet in person. Either these two are being painted as sympathetic figures that we're rooting for, or Blake is... there's gonna be a plot twist, and this Blake guy who is, you know, older, too good to be true, family man, is gonna turn on her, okay? We also got the backstory of Sissy. Uh, the new villain in this book and her backstory I can tell that there is some that there's gonna be some sympathy extended to her So we get like a more compelling villain as opposed to a all bad boogeyman that we got in the previous book So that makes it interesting. There is sympathy, but not Condonement like we don't agree with anything she does. She's obviously framed as a horrible person No questions about that and her backstory reminds me of that movie fat girl I don't know if any of you have seen this film. She reminds me a bit of the younger sister in the film fat girl um, I don't want to give away what happens in that film but the decision that girl makes at the end of the movie, it reminds me of the character Sissy. Let's just put it that way, okay? There are so many moving parts in this book, and I'm really impressed with how everything is going so far. And it seems like everything is getting enough screen time to make sense and to be relevant in the story. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. The pacing is very fast. Um, the characterizations are just enough for us to care about them and what's going on. Check in soon. Okay, it's late in the afternoon. I've been working out for about like an hour. The dog is barking, but this is not a, the, a section where I review books, so I don't care to deal with it. I'm so sweaty. Ugh. Gosh, I need to take a shower. I'm gonna have some food. I'm gonna take a shower, and then I'm gonna get try to get back into this book. I'm not making any sense, am I? Later tonight. I am a sweaty and swollen mess, but I worked hard. This is the fruits of my labor. I need a shower. Later that day. Okay, hi. Um, it's three in the morning, so I have come back to tell everybody, you, my lovely viewer, that I have finished For the Sake of Two by Judith Sonnet, and I could not... Look, I sped through the finale. I sped through the second half of this book so much because I was just unable to put it down. When I read about like the first 30%-ish, I think, this morning, I was like, okay, this is nice, this is interesting setup. And one thing I should commend this book for is something that I criticized the book off-season of doing. And in off-season, I heavily criticized the book for 
the amount of padding there was in terms of introducing us to characters that would ultimately just, you know, die. I didn't give a single shit about anybody in the book off season. That is not the same over here. Over here, I was very impressed with how well the characterization was done. And if any of you are gonna be like bitching to me and being like, are you saying this book is better than off season? Yeah, I am. Deal with it. <laughs> I normally get very annoyed with flashbacks, with books that insert flashbacks here and there because it's like the author was like, I'm not feeling this character right now, so I'm probably gonna develop them and just halt the story in order to develop these people and just take my reader out of it. Yeah, that shit pisses me off, okay? But over here, the flashbacks genuinely added some momentum to the story. Whenever a flashback came out and I was promised that I was gonna learn more about something that I genuinely wanted to know about. It brought me back to when I read Survivor for the first time, which, spoiler alert, Survivor is my favorite book ever and nothing will beat it, I don't think. And in that book, it was about, you know, snuff films and there were some flashbacks about the characters who made those movies and I found those stories to be completely riveting and I thought they added so much to the overall oomph to the book at the end. And the same thing is to be said over here, when we get the flashback of sissy sadism girl, I was like, I was very impressed. When we learn about her relationship with her parents and her younger sister and a certain revenge that happens, I was kind of cheering for her in this scene. Like I wanted to see her succeed in getting revenge on certain people for things that they did to her when she was a child and turning a blind eye to a victim. I was happy for her, okay? Which made it so perplexing when I had to hate her later on in the story. It was just such a fantastic mix of emotions. Us questioning ourselves as readers and how we think of certain people and how we can, you know, sympathize with someone but condemn things they do that are legitimately evil. But then where does the evil come from? It's all just, it's a lot and I loved it. And despite the fact that there are quite a number of characters, they don't feel like padding, they don't feel like filler, they feel like genuine moving parts in the story. Especially ones that you think are never gonna show up again. Oh boy. Good heavens. Just you wait. <laughs> and the carnage really does start when Millie and Blake's path crosses with the one of um, Sissy, which is, you know, obviously it's gonna happen. When shit goes down and when we start getting to the um, meats of the story, the third act did remind me of that film um, Sallow, 120 Days of Sodom, Circle of Sex, Circle of Shit, Circle of uh, Blood. So the finale of this book did remind me of that, although it was far quicker and far more like, you know. And I especially loved the finale. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the final thing has so many false finishes. Like you think you can celebrate and then hold your horses. Stuff like that. I don't want to give anything away. Will definitely piss some people off, okay? Okay. And yeah, I don't really want to compare this to any other movies for the sake of <laughs> for the sake of um, maintaining the spoiler-free nature of this book, but it did remind me of so many um, extreme horror movies that I enjoyed, that I personally like. This book is fantastic, and I gave it five fucking stars. And I should probably go tell Judith now what I gave it because I've been like spamming her. <laughs> it's super late at night. I think it's like early afternoon where she is and I've just been like spamming her like about the scenes I've been reading and I should probably tell her what I rated this book. A huge thank you to her because apparently I'm the very first person to have read this book. Like I was the first person to get an arc so that is such an honor such a privilege. It was amazing. It was phenomenal. It understood the assignment. But right now I think I need to try to get some sleep so I will see you when I see you. Probably tomorrow. The next day. Hey everyone. Hi. So uh, excuse the lighting, excuse the hair as for- actually I'm just gonna hide my hair like this. Enjoy my fucking face. So I just made some coffee. I don't understand people who can make coffee and actually bring it to the front of a camera and talk into the camera. It's like, girl, when I'm making my coffee, I just want to sit down and not think about shit. But like, I also want to be one of those like cute aesthetic people that has props when they- Am I fucking even in focus? What the fuck? Okay. Hi. But I want to be one of those cute like aesthetic people that has 
drops, you know, and drinks. Bitch, I can be cute too, okay? I ain't just a bitch around here. I'm a cute bitch. Oh my gosh. Y'all should see what I'm balancing this camera on. Okay, why have I turned on this camera? I've turned on this camera to tell you about the fact that I am starting my third slash last question mark book for this vlog. And I'm wearing green today because I'm so excited to tell you that this book I'm reading is one that I've been highly anticipating for like a very long time. And this is the latest novel by author Eric LaRocca, You've Lost a Lot of Blood. And the reason I'm so excited to read this book is because last year for Summerween, P.S. Can you believe it's almost time for Summerween? What the fuck? Does time even exist? Is time a concept? Is society a society? What the fuck? Anyway, so this book is one that I am super excited for and that I am determined to like because things have gotten worse. Since you last spoke was a book that did mean quite a lot to me. That's a book that in my opinion, let me know if you can relate, is about the dark things and the dark places people are willing to go in order to push back against loneliness, okay? And that's something that I felt on a very deep and personal level because this book came out when we were still in a very bad place in the pandemic and so I was spending a lot of time by myself, without, any, without my friends, without, you know, the emotional support I needed and my mental state was shit. And because of that book, I felt so, you know, seen in a way. I mean, I didn't do what those people in that book did. I can't relate that much, but what I can relate to are the sentiments that were shared that I personally interpreted from that book, okay? I just started this book and so far I don't know what I think. I am liking the way it's written. Eric LaRocca is a very, very talented writer. So this book is about something and I don't know what that something is. We basically follow um, these two boyfriends and we're from the point of view of one of them and he's talking shit about the other boyfriend and I do like that like I do like couples that secretly hate each other so seeing this trope but like in a fancy art house context is nice for me I do like that not sure how I feel about this book don't know exactly what's going on I can only hope and assume it'll get more clear as time goes on but but yeah check in soon <laughs> Hi, so I live in Asia and in Asia, I don't know if your country has this, let me know if you live in Asia and you have this phenomenon, but there are tons of stray cats and that cat does, does not belong to us, we do not own pets. I, ha I can't film outside because that cat was like following me around and I can't, I, well I can't vlog with like an animal just like, you know, up, up in my business. I feel like I'm gonna have to continue the rest of this vlog inside, luckily the outdoor lighting is pretty good. Anyway, can I just like sit, sit sit down somewhere? Can I sit down here? Oh, can I sit down like this? Can I sit down like this though? Can I sit down like this though? Cause do I own the place though? All right, so I am further into, can I, hello, hello? Is this angle, fuck me in the fucking titties. I am pretty impressed with how the story has begun. Um, the whole dynamic of these two's relationship is interesting. And I texted Gabby, I was like, girl, if you liked this beginning portion of the story, you might like the book Exquisite Corpse, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see if she wants to read that. But yeah, I generally don't know how I'm feeling about the rest of this book. Uh, I'm almost halfway. And we have like a very story within a story kind of thing. So we cut away from these two guys and we are now reading a novel that one of the guys in the book has written. That story is very bizarre. The characters in the story are acting very weird. And I don't know, I mean, it's interesting to me. I'm very interested so far. And this is giving me, you know, the, the weirdness and the randomness of it all and the genre-defying nature that I'm sensing so far is giving me some shades of David Lynch. 
But yeah, I am not connecting with this book in a way that I hoped I would. The other one, although I couldn't relate to a single thing the characters were doing, I was able to follow the story very easily and the sentiments that they were conveying with their very bizarre actions were things that I could relate to. But over here, it's like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I, I'm very perplexed. I'm liking the vibes, okay? I'm liking the very puzzling vibes that one would get when they watched a David Lynch film. But even with the Lynch films, it's like, I do see something, I do see some grounding in the human world. Like, I mean, regardless of how, you know, confusing most people said Mulholland Drive was, that film still had its critique on Hollywood's empty, soulless nature that I'm sure many people could relate to or empathize with or could extrapolate to other aspects of their lives. Over here, I just struggle to care, <laughs> um, which hurts to say because I genuinely wanted to love this book, but I am just not, it's just, it's just not it, just not the vibe. But yeah, I'm gonna try to finish it off and then update when I am done. At first, I was really liking it, but now I, I don't know. It's feeling like a two star, it's, it's feeling, it's, it's, it could get a one star. It could get a one star, like that's how not into it I am right now. But yeah, check in soon. All right, hi. Um, it is very bright and sunny today, and I have finished You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca, and I didn't like this book, you guys. Damn, I am sad. I went into this book just really determined to like it. Like, I, I was forcing myself to be interested. To, to, to be interested, no, to be interested. And I just emerged very disappointed in what I just finished. I mean, I can spend time dissecting this thing, but the point being is that overall, I just didn't feel like this book connected with me on a personal level the way the other one did. And I will say that I did find the characters to be very interesting at first. This book does have interesting topics of discussion that I noted down on my review. So it's like, you know, the nature of plagiarism, the intersection of art and brutality, and the differences between something disturbing and something scary. Also, Eric LaRocca referenced one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen called Men Behind the Sun. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's fucked up shit. But even with these discussions, the discussions of these things felt so black and white. Like, one guy was wholly on one side, the other guy was on the other side. You can take any novel that someone dislikes and say, but that was the point. But did you like the book? Did you like the book? Tell me, did you like the book? You can understand the point and still dislike the book, you know? And I did not like this book, I am sorry. And yeah, I think I'm gonna end this vlog now. It's getting a bit long, I feel like. Thanks for watching, peace. All right, so that was the vlog. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Uh, feel free to suggest any books you'd like to see me read in the future in this genre. The more trigger warnings, the better. That's how that goes with me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in future videos. And as always, take care. I lose myself in